when X Factor was on, I'll, I'll talk a little bit about X Factor, right? When it was on, they put Downton Abbey straight afterwards. What a bummer. <laughs> it was just like high, low, 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 low. What do the words urban heights mean to you? For me, it's um, inner city uh, progression. I think that was the kind of thing about um, elevation, um, where we, we're rising up. I think that was definitely how we you know, envisaged uh, the urbanness, because where we where it was based at the time is a city um, you know, made up of many towns. Um, so for the for the people that don't know, it was a shop that you ran. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's it's kind of two things because. Um, at the time, maybe 10 years ago, coming up to 10 years ago, we had a shop um, that we opened up, which was based around urban culture, uh, dealing with music and clothing, lifestyle. Uh, quickly kind of morphed into a, a radio station, an internet radio station, a little bit of a studio, and then we had a promotions thing doing uh, open mic nights. So uh, anything that was around urban culture at the time, grime, hip hop definitely, um, and the early stages of dubstep in, in our area. Uh, that was a kind of unsaid thing before. Well, I've said it now. <laughs> <laughs> well, one thing that had a lasting impact on me is because uh, at one point in uh, your Urban Heights era, you had a barber shop at the back. Yes, and, uh, yeah, and yeah. I had uh, I had an experimental haircut. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the term Beckham and Patterns. <laughs> <laughs> Know. Where uh, it was, it was left a bit messy on the top, and then in the sides there was a big pattern right. shaved. Is that, in. is that what they call it? A beckon and pattern. That's what they right. tried to sell it to me as. Right. And, okay. uh, as a white man, it wasn't necessarily the the most right. appropriate look. It was experimenting. Was, exactly, but yeah. that's kind of was that what it was about for you? Just like experimenting within the youth. Yeah, definitely. I think um, I think the thing is now uh, urban culture uh, is is. You know, it's, it's kind of mainstream. Um, you know, we're, we're all very used to Dizzy Rascals and you know, Wiley's being on the TV and doing that stuff. But uh, in 2004, you know, that was, you know, very much a, a, a new thing, you know, a new thing. And, um, you know, Underground, we all knew about it. And, and the kids, dare I say that, uh, using the inverted commas. Um, yeah, everybody knew about it, but now it's mainstream. It was very much Underground. And America was doing things um, it, it was just, uh, yeah, definitely about experimenting and, and moving with the times, things, things change. Like, when it comes to fashion, what, what do you get excited about when it comes to clothes? Um, I mean, I'm a kind of, uh, I come out of uh, BMX skate culture first, you know, like, uh, that was kind of the mishmash of that with hip hop culture. Um, and so I, I kind of, you know, roll around like vans and, and things like that. That excites me. Uh, comfortable style uh, doesn't have to be like, um, doesn't have to be cheap. And, and, and like, uh, you know, like the old, uh, people, some might, might say about trackies, you know, oh, you just got your trackies on. Yeah, but they're nice trackies. <laughs> you know what I mean, they're, they're nice, they're nice. You know. The executive tracks. Yeah, you know, people, you know, I think it's the thing with, uh, like with, like with caps and stuff, people wear caps and wear nice, it's not a something you pull out your back pocket or something, just whack on everything like, yeah, that'll do and stuff. Um, it's like good good style. Um, I like colour, you know, I like colour a lot. Um, I like fashion, you know, I mean, fashion music kind of, uh, you know, they're, they're two bedfellows, definitely something that you, you can be, anybody involved in music has a, some sort of uh, fashion crossover. Uh, but definitely what excites me is, um, Design, I like individualism, if that's a, still a, a, an actual word. Uh, and you can, yeah, you can uh, pick up some interesting stuff. So I want to end on the happiest note possible. Cool. If we could pick up Rod Aslan now. Give me 50 quid. Yeah, that's All right. Okay. Fees off screen. <laughs> <laughs> All right, if we could pick up Rod Aslan now and place him anywhere in the world that would be perfection to you, doing whatever, being wherever, what would it be? Uh, as a proud man of Medway, I would say uh, probably living in Gillingham uh, with free chips and legal ganja. <laughs> um, but other than that... And they go hand in hand as well. Yeah, you know, like, mate, that would be it. If I had a chip shop and a ganja farm in Gillingham, sweet as a nut. And that's it? That's it, really. I think, yeah, but um, 
Oh, alternatively, uh, it's a bit of a protest on the monkey. I'd right. say Colorado or California. They're free places, bro. Because of what they're doing with the green. Exactly. What they've done. Not what they're doing. Done. 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 And done. that's what we need in Medway. That's what we need in the world. <laughs> <laughs> Full stuff. Yeah, then it'll be a lot, a lot better. Yeah, but yeah, I, 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 um, yeah I'm a Medway guy. I, you know, I, I like Medway. Um, it's not done me any, any wrong. I've, I seem to have done all right by coming from and still living in Medway. So uh, if I could move, it'd be mostly because there's weed and a bit of sunshine. But take the chips with you. Well, let's just see. See, this is the thing. They don't realize that I'm gonna wherever I go, I'm gonna open a chippy. You know what I mean? <laughs> don't you worry about that, mate. You know, it's, we're frying tonight. <laughs> <laughs> Rod Aslan for hoodie.com. Absolute pleasure. Thank you very much. Of respect. Big up the crew. Thanks for having me. <laughs> Cheers. There are people coming from